Hello YouTube, it's Kyle here. Now, I've got a question for you. Now we all know we can make robots and we all love to make robots with our Arduinos and, and remote controlled cars and toys and aeroplanes and uh, drones. Now, the only thing that I've found is you can do everything with this. But what if you want a user interface for this? What if you want to control your robot? What options are there open for you? Now, I know I can get a breadboard and I can put some buttons on it and a potentiometer or some switches, but I've just been sent a product which I just want to share with you. Now, icstation.com is a company specializing in microcontroller components, electronic components, custom PCBs, and other electronic goods such as the Arduinos, Funduinos, and they sent me this. Now this is the Funduino Joystick Shield. Now when I received this through the post, I was really happy. I mean, this looks fun, doesn't it? This looks really colorful, bright colorful, very user-friendly. And, you know, it, it, looks, it looks simple to use, which is, in essence, the thing you look for most with your user interface, is you want something that anyone can pick up and use. And I think this hits it right on the button. Now, this product from icstation.com comes out at $7.35, which equates to currently £4.50 in English money. Now, at the end of this video, I will share with you a voucher, a coupon that IC Station have given me to pass on to you, my viewers, that will entitle you to a discount on your first order. Now, this product came very well wrapped, came very well packaged indeed through the mail. Now, I mean, it's got quite a few pins that you wouldn't want bent or touching other pins, and it came, all the pins came with foam protection and padding on them. The only thing that was self-assembly required was just putting the thumbstick cover on the thumbstick, just like that, and then I'm away. Now, I'll just give you a closer look to this board, and we'll go through some of the pins that break out. Now, this is, um, this board's compatible with Boards of the same footprint size as the Arduino Uno, Due Milanove, uh, the Leonardo, and of course the full Mega range. Um, so for example, that's my Arduino Uno, and it would just line up with the two sets of header pins there and sit. So you'll have a bit of an overhang, but that's actually quite nice when you hold it in your hands. It's just about enough room, by the way, for a 9-volt battery, if you're considering, because your an interface such as this would require some some external power source. Right. So, in the top left hand corner here we see it says Nokia 5110. Now you can purchase a LCD screen, a Nokia LCD screen, which will sit in this top left hand corner here, which you can use for some visual feedback. Now I've seen some people play Pac-Man on this with the LCD and using the thumbstick or even Snake, Snake 2, you know the old Nokia games using these buttons to control the snake. Now the, the LCD screen by the way you can also order from icstation.com. Right, so you've got these eight pins here but just because it says Nokia LCD screen doesn't mean that's what you have to use, just bear in mind it gives you a little bit more detail just down, just down here. Um, which you can use these pins for also. So you've got an additional ground and plus of three volts, but also all of your digital out pins here. Same with these digital out pins. They are just the same as these digital out pins. They're exactly the same, they just connect straight in. The difference is on some of these pins, these buttons do attach. Now, I will share with you a sketch that I have written that does detail each of the ports that the different inputs connect to and that should help you if you're interested in getting underway with using this as a product. I found this very simple to use and it's, I've been able to, to write this into my current university project for my quadcopter. So I'm very pleased and I'll, I'll show you what I've done with it shortly. But moving on, so we've got, as I said, we've got the digital pins there. Right, in this top right hand corner here it says Bluetooth switch hands. So it says Bluetooth on this top left hand corner here with your receiver, transmitter, ground and positive volts. Now 
this is brilliant because of course if you've got a remote control you will have a radio and you could, if it's Bluetooth you can just slot that straight in. Now I did try and put an XB Series 2 in here. Uh, the positive and ground worked absolutely fine. The receiver and transmitter, I was getting um, different characters sent to what I expected, and I imagine that's probably because of the way this might be wired specifically for Bluetooth. But I will do a bit more reading on this. But what, how I've got around it is I've put my TX and RX in the TX and RX pins, which would appear on the Arduino Uno, which is down here. But I will show you that shortly. Now, the overall feel of this product is very lightweight. It feels quite nice in your hand. You've got... Um, so you've got your X and your Y for your analog stick, and this is nice and smooth, there's no clunkiness. You've got the push down analog stick in there, which is nice, like games console kind of feel to it. And plus you've got these buttons here, which have quite a nice solid firm click to them, which is very nice, a very solid feel. It's just lovely. You've got these two buttons down here. Um, at times, they can be a little difficult to get to if you've got bigger thumbs than I do. Um, but overall, quite nice. It feels very user-friendly. Uh, moving down to the bottom here, we've got a voltage selector switch. You can have this entire shield operating at either 3 volts, 3.3 volts, sorry, or even 5 volts. And then these tie up to your analog inputs and outputs and your power rails down here. And in this very bottom corner you've got your external I2C uh, connectors. So as opposed to using ports A4 and A5 of the Arduino Uno, you can just go ahead and use the external I2C ports here. Now, like I said, I mean this does look fun. I really do like this board and I would recommend ordering it from IC station. The, the it came very quickly in the post. They're very honest with their pricing. And yeah, I mean, I certainly will be ordering from them some more products. Right. So what I'll do is I will show you my sketch that I have written for this for this board now. So this is IC Station's website. Uh, you can place any of your orders through this website directly. They also do have a Facebook page, uh, which I will give the description I'll give the link in the description. So the item I've been showing you today is the GamePad Joystick Shield for Arduino Simulated Keyboard and Mouse. Its item ID is 2323. It's $7.35, but in UK money that's £4.50. Um, and as promised, at the end of this video and in the description, you should find details of the coupon that they have provided me to give to you as a thank you for watching this video and thank you for placing your order and it will give you a discount off of your first order with icstation.com. Right, so along with that, um, I'm going to post my code with this video, and this code is a sketch that I created because I couldn't find this information online, and I just went through and tested each port to see which buttons connect to which socket. So hopefully you can order one of these, and you'll use my, my sketch, and you should be able to to understand from this which buttons to tie up to where and that should create vast amounts of creativity and fun for all of your projects. Now, so, I've tried to be rather descriptive with my variable names um, but if you ever find something doesn't quite work or you want some more information just drop me a comment or drop me an email through my YouTube channel. I'm always happy to answer questions. I love getting your questions. So. These four buttons here are the right-hand side yellow and blue buttons, and they tie up to pins D2, D4, D5, and D3. Now, these two buttons, this is probably me growing up with a PlayStation, um, where the two middle buttons of the controller were always start and select, so that's why I've named them this in my sketch. But these are the two buttons in the middle of the controller. The start button is the one just to the right-hand side of the controller, the select is the one to the left and they are connected to ports D6 and D7. The analog button itself, the click on the analog button, is attached to pin D8. The X and Y axis readings are analog readings and attached to pins A0 and A1. So I've also just created uh, an integer uh, array list here of all the buttons 
just so it makes it a lot easier and neater for your setup process as opposed to saying, you know, pin mode up button high, pin mode down button high. It's just, just a little bit neater and, you know, I just think it just looks a bit nicer. So this is all I've got for my void setup is just a loop, goes around eight times. Each time it will grab each item, each one of these buttons on in turn and they will set the pin mode to heart to input and it will pull the pull up it will activate the pull up resistors for each button. Now I wanted a little bit of output so I have set up a serial output for the terminal monitor and it will just it will tell you whether you've gone pressed up, down, what the current value of each button is as you press it. So it'll give you a bit of feedback and hopefully from this you'll be able to create fun little controllers of your own. Um, just a little note here, I've mapped the readings of the analog stick from 0 to 1024 to um, negative 1 and positive 1. Um, this was just something I, I, I just did out of preference, but you know, if you just had analog read x-axis and analog read y-axis, you will just get the full analog reading. Now, this sketch will be uh, shared with this video. You can find the link to the download direct in the description at the bottom of this video. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the this shield will fit on the Arduino Uno, Duo Milanove, Leonardo, and the Arduino Mega, and all of the Funduino series boards too. Now, I'm just going to put this down and show you what I've done with this product to incorporate it with my quadcopter. So, as I mentioned earlier, I was able to play with this to get it to work with my quadcopter. So this is what I've achieved. So I've attached my XP shield through one of the, the little screw holes in the top here. I've added two LEDs to the top pins up here because I'm not using a Nokia LCD screen as of yet. I've got these are the ground and positive voltage values for my XB, and this is my TX and RX. Now, I will show you. Let's just connect up the USB. Okay, so I've got power to my XB. My quadcopter is sitting here at the moment. It is just waiting for a signal. So, I'm using my start and select buttons to arm and prime. Nope. So, I send armed, and you'll see the quadcopter change from pink to red. But let's just disable that so it's unarmed, goes back to pink, armed. And then I always prime my motors. Green light, motor's spinning, motor's not spinning, motor's disarmed. You know, I can have lots of fun with this. I mean, and I increase the throttle with this very slowly. I've got it just to increment slowly for my throttle. And if I disconnect that, it will start de uh, going down slowly, which is my safety feature. I hope this review has been most helpful. Um, like I said, I would really recommend this product uh, for anyone who's just into fun little robot projects and just wants to control things. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a robot. You could probably even control your television from this if you, had, if you put your mind to it. Um, so yeah, so this product was provided to me by icstation.com. Uh, please check out their website. Please check out their Facebook page. Please like and subscribe to my videos, and I will catch you later. Take care. Bye-bye.